So I was uh, looking around for meters and I came across this meter online. Now the unique thing about this is it's um, high amps without a shunt. This meter is 100 amps um, and does not use a shunt. You actually run the, the current directly through the meter. Um, so that's uh, you know that uh, you know that has that's cool. That, this is cool for testing purposes. You know, if you're building something or testing something, and you want to know what kind of current draw you have or whatever, uh, and not having to wire up a, a shunt, um, I'm kind of excited about this meter. So here it is. I haven't really opened it yet, and um, this is actually the back side. That's the front side. Um, so. Um, you know, you can see it's got a uh, LCD screen. Um, these big wire links are actually your. Um, these are these are actually the shunts that measure the uh, the current. This is the 100 amp version. I believe I think there was a 300 amp version, which is amazing that you could run 300 amps through a PCB. Um, but I believe this was the 100 amp version, which is perfect for my power wall because I pull about 60, 70 amps. Um, uh, here it is. There's a screen. Um, I'm not sure how we power this. I did notice it has micro USB. I don't know if it's I don't know if it self powers off the um, um, off the leads or if I'm going to have to put separate power on. So we'll find that out in a second. But that's that. And then here it came with a bag of parts. Interestingly, it also came with a, a temperature sensor, which is pretty cool. So um, you know this might be. You know, this might even be good enough to permanently wire into your power wall um, to look at your draw, maybe the temperature of the packs. Um, this has this has some cool potential. Um, now, it, I will say it's it's a little bit of a weird design. It's not really panel mount. Um, you know, um, you know they put all the components on the back so that you could almost panel mount it, but your links are on the front. You know, you're, um, you know, you got this clicky switch on the front, so I'm not sure you could front panel mount this. And then you also can't really screw this onto a board because all your component trees on the back here and your plugs are on the back. So you're almost going to have to put some standoffs on the back here before you sort of, if you mount it on a board, um, you'll definitely need some sort of standoffs or something. But, um, you know, either way, this has potential. So let me, I think I'll rig this on my power wall. And um, we'll do some testing on the power wall. Actually, I've decided to break out my uh, solar generator for the testing. This is a 1500 watt solar generator with a, it uh, also uses a 24 volt 7S battery system inside. But I think we'll use my solar generator. That way I can do some testing right here on my workbench. So uh, yeah, let's break out the solar generator and wire this up. Okay, here is the meter uh, wired up. Um, believe it or not, I actually haven't even turned on the battery yet, but there is residual current being held in the capacitors here. That's why the voltage is 8 volts and dropping, but just because there's residual current. But the interesting thing is this meter is apparently self-powering, um, you know, self so I guess the... the you know, it probably powers within a, if your voltage is within a certain range, it can self power. So, um, this is 29 volts and so it is self powering. Now, let me turn on my, so, uh, my solar generator here. Okay, main battery is on. Okay, now we have 27.9 volts. Now, interestingly, this came up all in uh, Chinese, um, but I did press this button and boom, it switches to English. Um, so there we go. It says uh, 27.9 uh, volts. Current is zero amps. Capacity, I don't know. Um, time, temperature is zero C. Uh, yes, let's plug in just for fun. Let's plug in the the temperature sensor now. There's actually two plugs on the back here. Got to read it. Protect control and yeah, I think it's this one. Okay, there we go. 19C, which, uh, 19C, I mean, that's probably about right in Fahrenheit. It's probably, you know, 65, 70 here in Fahrenheit. So, 
That's probably good. Um, all right, let's uh, turn on the inverter here. Okay, inverter is on, and now we are pulling. And in fact, let me pull this. Uh, let me pull the screen protector off here. Yeah. Okay, screen protector is off. Okay, now we turned on the inverter and it's pulling uh, 0.6 amps. Let me plug in a load. Let me get my heat gun, that's the good old standby. Uh, I'll just plug it in the in the side here, even though I can, I can plug it in the front of the so you know, I can plug it in the, the front plugs there, but I'll just plug it directly into the inverter here. Okay, let's see what we do here. Okay, let's do um, low. Okay, 29 amps, 26 volts. Let's com actually compare that to the meter built, that's built in. Uh, that says... 29 amps this is 20 29 amps so pretty much uh, I would say these are our match um, 26.8 volts 26.6 uh, 26.8 volts so these are uh, you know these are um, yeah this meter is pretty consistent with my other meter let's put it on the high setting I think I, that's actually me trip. Yep. That's actually me tripping my own, um, tripping my own, um, inverter. I pulled too many, too much. Let me turn off the inverter, turn back on the inverter. Okay. Let's try that again. Oh, nope. Inverter. I uh, blew the, in well, I'm not blowing the inverter, but I'm tripping the inverter. I'm trying to, the heat gun on high, I think pulls. Um, about 1500 watts, which is right at what the, this is a 1500 watt inverter, so um, I'm asking too much of it. Oh well. Um, yeah, on the low setting, this thing just, uh, it works nicely. Um, let me put that down on the floor while it's pulling. Uh, let's uh, see what else this button does. Okay, that's a different display. 26 volts, 29 amps, uh, 800 watts. That's nice. Temperature 19C. Um, time two minutes. That's cool. Uh, same display, just in a different uh, BL on. I think that's backlight on. Yes, uh, this is currently backlit. So that's nice. Uh, greater than 300 volts. Not sure what that is. Okay. Greater than 100 amps. Okay. I guess these are the specs of it built into it. Um, but yeah, actually, I think I like this. I think I like this display better. It gives us everything we need. Our wattage, the amps we're pulling, and the, uh, the voltage. Um, yeah, so I like this, uh... I like this display and actually the backlit is quite, that's pretty cool too. Um, I may put this in my power wall. Um, you know, I have the shunt and I have the meter. I actually have multiple meters on my power wall, but um, you know, that backlit display is nice. Um, I do like, uh, you know, I do like having a meter that I can see across the across the garage what's going on um yeah and that backlighting is nice and it's nice having it one control one contained unit without a separate shunt and then running wires back and forth you know the current meter i have takes four separate wires into the meter um and then the shunt has you know more wires so you know it just adds wiring everywhere putting this directly in line um is pretty nice now, um, the, uh, this is a, I believe this is directional. The voltage is coming in and out here. I do not believe that this reads backwards. Um, I can do a test on it, um, but I do not believe it reads backwards. So, uh, 
be aware that uh, you know when you switch into charging mode I don't know that this is going to tell you how much current is coming into the battery um, I'm tempted to to test this in reverse but also don't want to blow it so I'll check this I'll check the stats in a second before I um, try reversing the current on this um, but uh, we'll see if maybe it is reversible but I don't think it is I do believe this is directional which means when you're charging you won't get your charge rate you'll have to rely on your charge controller for your for what kind of charge um, current you're getting but I'll look at the stats and, and you know I'll let you know Okay, so I looked up some specifications on this. Um, this is actually rated up to 300 volts, um, which is crazy because it's 100 amps at 300 volts. Um, however, it only self-powers up to 30 volts. If you are running current greater than 30 volts, you will need to provide a secondary power source um, for, to, for the display, um, either through micro USB or there is a power header for up to 30 volts here. Um, but up to 30 volts it'll self power over 30 volts you will need a secondary power supply for the screen um, this this button is clicky and I am I haven't quite figured out how to use it but you can sort of I, you can you can reset your capacity and your time and all that by by holding it down and it, it zeroes out a lot of the, the displays somehow I managed to change this, I think this might be like an over voltage setting. Um, Cause there is some sort of protection header that I bet you you can power like a relay or a cutoff switch or something with. However, I haven't yet quite figured out how to change it. I managed to ch lower it one volt cause it used to say 300 volts, but you know, you sort of hold it down and now it's back up to 300 volts. So I don't, really know how to get it to change I'm holding it down right now nothing's happening okay so I, I I don't know how to get it to oh hang on what just happened let's go back there So less, so what is this? This is less than 0.3 volts, greater than 100 amps. You know, I think those are, these are your parameters where it can trigger the protection, but greater than 300 volts, that's not very helpful. Um, well, anyways, I mean, it does appear as though you can actually change the prote protection parameters. I mean, this is a cool feature if you do use some sort of, um, cutoff relay or solenoid or something like that or maybe your inverter actually has a a safety cutoff this does look like you can use it to trigger it but I haven't yet quite figured out how to make it uh, do this um, again holding it down doesn't seem to do anything but somehow I did manage to get that to go to 299 volts so it's not intuitive um, how exactly yeah, it's not intuitive how you get it to change, but I did manage to get it to change. So, um, you know, maybe someone can actually find a, a manual on this thing because I haven't, you know, I haven't found the secret source yet to getting that to change, but I did get it to change. So anyways, I'll continue play with this, but um, this meter actually has a lot of potential. I don't know if I will actually make it power to the power wall or just a testing rig. Um, be easy to put a couple, you know, XT60s on the ends of this and then just wire it into my various rigs as I go um, as a tester. But um, this is a cool, cool tester and, you know, might be good for, um, you know, when I'm doing tests and I'm recording on YouTube, then this, this might be nice, a nice screen. And again, it saves you having to use your multimeter or trying to measure, you know, high current with a clamp on or a multimeter. So I like it.